in talking to um, new market users, one of the things I sometimes hear is that uh, there can be a learning curve when it comes to first using MarkEdit. Uh, part of this comes from the fact that uh, when working with MarkEdit, you're working with uh, records outside of your library system, so the workflows are going to be slightly different. Um, there's a, a process to be able to, in order to edit records in MarkEdit, we have to move them from Mark into a uh, uh, more friendly format, a uh, mnemonic format, that we can edit and then we have to take that those data edits and move them back into uh, a format that your ILS or OCLC can understand. Um, one of the, the strengths and, and, and maybe admittedly for first time users a weakness of the program is that there's a lot of different workflows to do the same thing. Um, in general I'd say that there are probably two common workflows for, for doing the process that we're going to describe. Um, and so uh, what I wanted to do here um, while this information exists in uh, multiple YouTube videos um, that kind of uh, demonstrate parts of it, um, we'll go ahead and put together the whole process and, and call this essentially kind of a Mark Edit 101, a primer for uh, new users looking to be able to understand the, the general workflow of taking data um, from Mark and moving it um, into the mark edit uh, workflow so that you can edit the data and then and get it back out um, so that you can um, load it into your ILS or OCLC or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a record from OCLC. I'm going to use connection, the, uh, the um, browser version, and I went ahead and queued up a uh, uh, mark record. I'm going to go ahead and download it, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. This gets saved into my downloads directory. I'm going to go ahead and open that folder and move this to uh, the desktop here. All right, so there's our folder. There's our file, uh, markedit.dat. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a copy of this file because I want to um, demonstrate the two different workflows. So the reason why I made a copy of this file is to, to demonstrate um, uh, one of the things that uh, happens in MarkEdit. So MarkEdit uh, understands um, certain uh, certain file extensions. I, I get this question from new users um, periodically when they ask, uh, "Will MarkEdit work with a DAT file?" Um, which is what um, the browser here downloaded for me. Will it work with a .bin file? Which is what um, the uh, connection client tends to export to, um, as well as a number of uh, ILS systems? And the answer is yes. I mean, in, in a lot of respects, those file extensions are pretty arbitrary. They're meaningless. Um, what they really do in a, a Windows system and, and most uh, and, and in other uh, operating system environments is they tell the operating system uh, what application is associated with that particular file type. So that so in this case. Um, MarkEdit is, is uh, automatically associated with the .mrc file type. Um, that file type uh, tells MarkEdit that this file is a block of Mark records. Um, it also understands the .mrk file type. Um, that file type tells MarkEdit that the file um, is a mnemonic file format. It's a, it's a broken set of records that have been taken from Mark and moved into um, a uh, format that's um, applicable for the Mark editor, which is where you're going to do your global edits. Um, so the reason why I created two files here is to demonstrate the two uh, different types of workflows. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one. Uh, the first workflow um, is probably the uh, the most traditional. Um, a user would open Mark Edit um, in the uh, main window. They'd select Mark Tools, which will open up uh, the application in the Mark Tools window. The Mark Breaker breaks records from Mark into uh, the mnemonic format, and I could use either um, either of these files. I'm going to go ahead and grab the DAT file. Uh, and drag that into the input file box or I could go ahead and hit open and browse to the file and select it. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it. I'm going to go ahead and hit execute. The file is going to process. There's one record in there and now I have one record that's been created. I'm going to drag this in. It's this file here, export.mrk. Now that .mrk file is the mark record that uh, I downloaded but broken into the mnemonic format. So I can go ahead and hit edit records here 
and the program will open up the record for editing. So you can see that this is different um, than a, uh, a block mark record. It's a mnemonic record. The mnemonic format uh, mark edit is uh, very strict about it. Um, fields always start with an equal sign. Uh, then field numbers, those can be either numeric or alphanumeric, depending on um, which ILS system accepts. Then two spaces. And then if it's a non-control field, um, you have your indicator values. If it's a control field like the 008, 005, 003, or 001, or anything under the 010, um, there's going to be no indicators. Uh, so you'll see here it's just the two spaces and then the field starting. Um, subfields are notated by a dollar sign. Actual real dollar signs are denoted uh, by a mnemonic, which is um, uh, open um, open face prints and then uh, a uh, dollar and then a close. So for example, if I was going to enter uh, an actual dollar value here, um, I would do the open paren. Um, in there's a, there's a preference in mark edit that turns on what we call auto sense. Um, and in this case, I have it turned on. So when that open value is set, and then I can start typing, I want the dollar sign. I'll go ahead and select that. And it puts the mnemonic value into um, the the window, and that would represent a actual character dollar sign. When Mark Edit reprocesses the file back into Mark. Anyways, um, so this is my Mark file. Let's say I do an edit. I'm going to do a really really uh, simple edit. I'm just going to go ahead and add a field, um, a meaningless field. Remember, this is um, you have to include indicators when adding fields. So slash slash blank indicators, subfield A. Uh, test field. I'm going to go ahead and add that field. Field is added. Uh, I go down here and I can see it. Okay, so I'm ready now to take this record and put it back into Mark. Um, so some of the confusion happens is some confusion happens when uh, people just hit uh, save. Save button um, is the you know the record's been saved. Sometimes uh, new users will think, okay, that means that. Um, my record, my .mrk file, is ready to be uploaded back to my ILS. Uh, it's not actually the case. Um, this just saves the mnemonic format. Uh, so if I want to take this data and move it back into um, the uh, mark format, I have two options from here. I can either go to File and Compile File into Mark, or I can just go ahead and hit this button here, um, Compile Records. Um, it's going to prompt me for a new record um, file. I'm going to go ahead and just call this one export one. And you can see one record was created. And here it is. So that's my file. That file is now ready um, to be uploaded into my ILS. It is a block of Mark records. Uh, if I saved the record in the Mark editor uh, and closed it, and I have just this file here, the export.mrk file, I could go to Mark Tools. I could drag this into the, the input box. Um, I could change this to Mark uh, Maker. And I'm going to say export2.mrc and process it. Again, now I have one record, uh, Mark uh, the export.2.mrc, and that record has been has taken that MRK file, run it through the Mark Maker, and created a, a Mark block file that can be loaded into your ILS system. All right, so what's the other workflow? So the other workflow um, is slightly different. Uh, this works specifically on files that are associated with Mark Edit. So in this case, a .mrc file. Um, and this is why, for example, if you're um, downloading records from somewhere like OCLC or working with the bin files from uh, Connection or from your ILS, um, there actually is a, a benefit to changing the extension to .mrc if you're going to be working with Mark Edit. Um, in this case, Rather than opening up the Mark Editor program, um, I can just right click on it and say preview the Mark file. And Mark Edit will automatically break that record and then open that record into um, the Mark Editor, into its mnemonic format. Um, I can again make my changes to the record so that it um, so that it looks like what I want it to look like, and then go through the, the same process as, as before, where I hit compile and compile the records back into Mark. And I won't do that since I've already done it um, twice before. So those are basically the two most common 
uh, workflows um, that I think people use when working with MarkEdit. Um,